If there's three snowboarders in a car, who's driving? A police officer. Seems like the right joke for this resort. If you find your way to Utah, there's a skier only resort overflowing with character and vibe nestled in the little cottonwood canyon called Alta, not Alta. In this review and rating, I'll discuss the directions, mountain, stats, trail map, suggested runs, and the area. After that, I'll do a one to 10 rating of the skiing, the appraised ski, and the beauty of the area. Let's get started. One of the great things about Alta is how simple it is to get to. You fly into the Salt Lake City Airport, and then you can get a shuttle. I'll put a link to the shuttle service below, and then it's about a 45 minute drive up to the resort. It's one of the things people really like about the resort. It's easy to get to. to Alta by driving up Highway 210. You'll see backcountry skiing on your left and then come upon the Wildcat and Albion bases. If you look up to the right, you'll see the Wildcat chair, Collins area, and the High Traverse upon that ridge. If you go to the very top of the mountain, you'll see access to the Snowbird Ski Resort, the Sugarloaf chair, and the area around it. And then you'll finally come upon Catherine's area, the Challenger chair, and the Sunnyside area. The stats for Alta are impressive. The resort is heavy on expert skiing and isn't the best choice for beginner skiers at 15% beginner runs, 30% intermediate, and 55% expert. The resort has a respectable and well-used 2,614 skiable acres. There are a total of eight lifts consisting of one six-pack, three express quads, one double, and one rope toe. There are also three T-bars that provide access to the hotels. The peak elevation is 11,068 feet. The base is at 8,530 feet, and the vertical drop is 2,538 feet. Finally, Alta gets a whopping 546 inches of annual snowfall. Looking at the trail map from left to right, I like to split the mountain up into four areas. From the left, there's Challenger Sunnyside, then Sugarloaf, after that, what seems like the heart of the resort, Collins Wildcat, and not to be forgotten, the Transfer Toe Village area. Let's begin by looking at the Supreme Chair. Most people I asked recommended I hike up to Catherine's area, and I'm happy I took their advice. With a quick 50 yard hike, it opens up a combination of tree runs that are fun to navigate, with a couple short breaks, the boot pack is no problem for the average ski bum. I had to take my time and pick different lines off of Catherine's, and nothing was overly intense. The area's skiers left of Challenger provide a perfect home for intermediate skiers looking for a long groomers and short expert terrain runs to poach. You also can't help but to be impressed by the views of Devil's Castle and looking out onto Solitude and Brighton getting off the chair. Below Supreme is Sunnyside. This is the only refuge for the beginner at Alta. It also provides the most direct access to the popular Alf's restaurant, which I'll discuss more later, and both the Supreme and Sugarloaf quads. Speaking of Sugarloaf, the majority of people funnel down roller coaster. There are terrific runs for intermediate skiers, unexpected hills and gentle turns, fitting the name roller coaster. There's also a gate at the top of the mountain providing one of the many famous traverses to both castle faces. The running joke is another long traverse ahead, Alta. In addition, there are short expert runs that can be jumped on and off from this chair. If you push at skiers left, you can make your way over to some of the best skiing on the mountain, known as backside. The top of Sugarloaf is also where you can ski over to Snowbird, an awesome resort with extreme inbound turns. Now let's talk about the premier area of Alta off of Collins, which is accessed by the High Traverse. This traverse takes some getting used to and isn't for the faint of heart. There's a sign showing an inconspicuous entrance to the traverse. As you follow the path that spans about a half a mile, it gets riskier and steeper if you fall. It can be busy, so you don't want to stop. Not to mention, I ran into exposed rocks that nearly made me tumble down a steep mountain face. Once you make it to what I dubbed the Grand Central Station of High Traverse, there's no signs. 
Although this will put you right where you want to be for the most exhilarating runs on the Greeley Bowl. There's also another traverse that will get you to the Baldy Shoulder that is a huge open bowl. Watson Shelter is also in this area and houses a coffee shop, cafeteria, and dining area. Besides that, Mambo is a terrific intermediate groomer for the casual skier off of Collins. It winds down the middle of the valley between Wildcat and the High Traverse and ends at the village. Finally, there's Wildcat that has what most resorts would consider long double black diamonds combined with wide shoots and challenging tree skiing. For whatever deep dark reason, Alta doesn't use the double black diamond designation. I did a little research to find out why the trend is spreading. And the scuttlebutt is either for insurance purposes or for simplicity. If you happen to know, please drop some insight into the comments section below. This area has some of the best views of the village area, Little Cottonwood Valley, and the city of Salt Lake. If you can handle the slow chair, this is where you'll get the most accessible expert runs. The most exciting run I had on the mountain is accessed via the High Traverse, and it begins at Regal Chute, meets up at High Rustler, and ends at Lower Rustler. Don't expect any signs showing you the way, but pray to Uller, it can be figured out. This is another oddity of Alta. They don't label all their runs. The steep shoots in the trees will get your blood pumping and second guessing your choice to ski this run, just in time to open up to the steeps at Rustler. Personally, to know I was on the run that I viewed while enjoying lunch at the gold miner's daughter was all the satisfaction I needed to feel like I'd skied all too well. My second favorite run is so long off of Challenger in Catherine's area. This starts by a short hike that is just enough work to leave the powder to the people who really want it. So long allows you to branch off and choose creative lines that keep your turns interesting. I recommend taking as many runs in this area as possible because each time you lap the area, you'll find a new stash. Finally, Melissa, who skied here for years, enjoys Sunspot via Saddle Traverse. She recommends this run because it gives you access to the majority of this face of the mountain. In my opinion, if you want a solid expert run that doesn't require much traversing at Alta, this is it. There are essentially two places you can stay when visiting Alta, the base of the mountain or at a ski in, ski out location. In most cases, I like staying in old mining or logging towns nearby resorts as they generally have more character, better dining, and reasonable prices. In Alta's case, if you can find any way to afford to stay on the mountain, you should. Highway 2 Twin on the way up to the resort from Salt Lake is a high avalanche area. And even if there's a moderate snowstorm, it will cause long delays, parking issues, and regular closures. If you choose to stay at the base of the mountain, look for hotels in the Little Cottonwood Creek Valley. The best bang for your buck is Courtyard by Marriott Salt Lake City Cottonwood. This is simply the best hotel for visiting any of the ski resorts in the area, and you run into a lot of fellow skiers. You'll get all you expect from a three-star hotel, including a pool, a gym, bar, and dining. You have four public areas to eat, drink, and hang out. First, there's the two on-slopes options, Alf's and Watson Shelter. After that, there's Albion and Wildcat Bases that are connected by a rope tow. In between these areas are the private bars located in the hotels. Alf's is essentially a huge lodge with cafeteria food, great views, and tons of seating, both indoors and outdoors. Watson is my favorite ski in, ski out location. You have Collins Grill on the third floor that provides American favorites with an amazing view. I'd recommend a reservation. On the main floor is Watson's Cafe that serves up a terrific Thai peanut bowl in a cafeteria setting. And there's a new coffee shop in the basement for a quick latte and a break from the slopes. The Albion area has the essentials consisting of the Albion Grill and Alta Java. I recommend Alta Java as it has a ski up window for a quick caffeine buzz and a snack. For the party area at Alta, find your way over to the Wildcat base. The most happening appraised ski location on the mountain is in this location. 
and will be packed with all the musty ski character vibe I could ask for at Gold Miter's Daughter Slopeside Cafe. Don't let the word cafe fool you. This is where the beer flows, high calorie food gets devoured, and ski stories get shared. You'll sit outside and peer up at High Rustler and convince yourself after a pitcher, you'll conquer that run first thing the next morning. Likely, if you don't get out of this joint soon, you won't be doing anything until the next afternoon and it will likely be a groomer. For on-site lodging, there's numerous options. The high-end locations are Snow Pine and Rustler. They have everything anybody could ask for in a ski-in, ski-out condo. Pools overlooking the valley, ski shops, classy restaurants, refined bars, and professional staff. If you want the height of luxury, these are your options. I think the ideal place to stay is the Alta Lodge. It generally caters to a more mature clientele and manages to combine an old ski lodge character with modern luxury. The lodge provides a well-planned and delicious breakfast, lunch, and dinner, along with a tea time with snacks. In addition, they have what can be argued as one of the best ski bars in the United States called the Sitzmark. The lounge surrounds you with an old wood charm, ski history, whiskey, and a social atmosphere. Another option that the lodge generously provides is a hostel sleeping arrangement. It allows someone to stay at this prime location for less than 200 bucks a night. Another location similar to the Alta Lodge is the appropriately nicknamed Groovy Peruvi. This was the first place I ever stayed in Alta and instantly made me realize Alta is damn cool. The arrangement and amenities are similar to the Alta Lodge, but seem to attract a younger demographic. I, for some reason, always smell a skunk bouncing around from room to room. The hotel guests only bar brings in party bands and lines up Jaeger bombs and IPAs like a water station at a running race. I love the scene, but realize I look like an undercover cop if I hang out at the bar. There's plenty of middle-aged people hanging out at the Peruvian, but they're mostly in the hot tub or next to the fireplace in the lobby. I've stayed at both the Peruvian and the Alta Lodges, and they are a rarity in a rapidly expanding corporate expansion into ski resorts. I highly recommend either as they're a dying breed. Both are where character and ski vibe meet. The Gold Miner's Daughter Lodge is right in the mix of the best après ski locations on the mountain. And I've heard nothing but good things. The cafe is the heart of Alta and you're 50 feet from the Collins Quad. I don't think there's much more direct ski in, ski out in the world. Finally, there are the privately owned condo rentals with options from high in three bedrooms to cozy one room condos. This may be the perfect option for a large group or family that wants the convenience and affordability of a full kitchen. This area consists of what's known as Powder Ridge, the Chalets, and the Sugar Plum slash Blackjack. The skiing at Alta is amazing if you learn to love the sketchy and long traverses. In addition, some of the most impressive bowls, including Castle and Baldy, are only intermittently open because of avalanche danger. Another strange thing the mountain does is not specify runs that are double black diamonds. With that being said, if you learn your way around the mountain's peculiar layout and lack of signs, you'll be rewarded with some of the best advanced skiing to be had in America. Plus, with over 500 inches of snow a year, this is a powder hound's dream. I highly recommend hiring a guide or making friends with somebody that knows the quirks of this ski hell. Otherwise, you'll miss the best runs. The skiing is a nine out of 10. The Apre Ski is a mixed bag and the best ski hangouts are private. For example, the sits mark at the Alta Lodge or the Peruvian Bar. That truly only leaves the Gold Miner's Daughter Cafe for a good time for the day tripper. To appreciate the character and vibe of this resort, you must stay at one of the all-inclusive lodges. I recommend getting one of the hostel-style rooms at the Peruvian or the Alta Lodge to save money, and you'll fall in love with this off-the-beaten-path feel of the nightlife. I rate the Apreski a 7 out of 10. The views are gorgeous from Alta, consisting of surrounding ski resorts, jagged peaks, Little Cottonwood Valley, and Salt Lake. You'll also have breathtaking views of Brighton and solitude from the top of Challenger. The vistas will provide you with a sense of awe on a clear day. I rate the beauty a nine out of 10. Overall, the resort is an eight out of 10. If you discover the hard to find runs 
and stay at the all-inclusive lodges a few nights, you'll feel like Alta should be rated higher. Many people fall in love with the soul of Alta. The locals like to think it is an undiscovered hill, but the secret is out. There's talk of building a gondola from Salt Lake to deal with the traffic bottleneck to the area, but that will be the end of this resort's unique feel. I'll add a link to a terrific video about the soul of Utah and an article about the potential gondola. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Please take a minute to subscribe. My goal is to reach 500 subscribers and appreciate your help. Take a look at my last review of Big Sky Resort. My next review will be of Deer Valley and I'm working on it now. Thanks again.